for months I've been talking about what seems to be kind of a pressing desire from Donald Trump to bomb North Korea because it would really serve so many purposes that to Trump, according to Trump's own internal logic, would be really important. Bombing North Korea might make Trump seem strong and powerful, and it would prove that he has the biggest button, I think is what he used to refer to button. it. Uh, take attention away from the scandals, right? The lack of accomplishments of the Trump administration. And then on some level, a nation at war, at least initially, right? In the long term, it didn't quite work out for George W. Bush, but at least initially, a nation at war, whatever that even means in 2017, often will rally behind the president, which might help Donald Trump's approval rating woes, which are not going away. But he hasn't done it yet, right? Donald Trump hasn't yet struck North Korea. And we may now be learning why, because according to new reports in The Telegraph and The Wall Street Journal, it's been Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis who have been urging Trump not to strike North Korea, something that by all accounts he has wanted to do 100 percent, as we imagined was going uh, was going on in his mind. And interestingly, these reports say that Donald Trump's national security advisor, I like to call him the not yet indicted Michael Flynn, H.R. McMaster, he reportedly is in favor of striking North Korea. He wanted to do what's called a bloody nose strategy. That means that when North Korea does one of their typical provocations, you immediately and sharply lash out in violence. And the analogy of calling it a bloody nose strategy is you punch someone in the nose immediately when they insult you, for example, to show them that you're not going to be pushed around or something like that, I guess. And these reports also are renewing allegations that Rex Tillerson's approach is really not pleasing Trump very much. And there's every indication that Rex Tillerson is still on thin ice. We recently heard uh, there was a CNN interview I saw a few days ago where one analyst said, uh, Tillerson is not going to last through 2018. Now, Tillerson, when asked, said he has no plans to leave. But saying I have no plans to leave is different than I can guarantee you I won't be fired. But that's sort of a sidebar to what we're talking about here, which is North Korea. The truth is Tillerson and Jim Mattis are correct to be cautious because in the end, North Korea does have nuclear weapons, whether they uh, are are telling the truth or not that they could strike the U.S. or U.S. assets or U.S. allies. It's actually kind of irrelevant because the possibility is there for them to strike someone with their nukes. And that's not something that the United States wants to provoke or be connected to being the catalyst for. And Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis uh, uh, believes, and I agree with him, that if Kim Jong Un did a retaliation, the likes of which he'd be capable of doing somewhere, right? Not necessarily on U.S. soil, but somewhere that it would be, quote, a war more serious in terms of human suffering than anything we've seen since 1953 with a potential death toll in the millions. Imagine the dynamic in the White House, right? I, and, and again, I happen to agree with Tillerson and Mattis. A strike is a bad idea for a number of reasons. But there is a case to be made for H.R. McMaster's position. Reasonable people competent people, people that are fit to serve and make these types of decisions, they could have a reasonable conversation about what the right approach with with North Korea is. But it's not like Trump is sitting there with these guys participating in the discussions like a, like an adult. I imagine, Pat, that Trump is sitting there while Tillerson and Mattis are arguing against a strike and McMaster is outlining the possible benefits. I imagine Trump sitting there with a TV remote in his hand watching Fox and friends saying, yeah, let's do it. Let's bomb them. Give me the button to press, guys. Yeah, I'd imagine he's leaning towards McMaster's side. But it is Absolutely. interesting how Tillerson and Mattis, one year into the presidency, have become the voices of reason here. I, know. I mean, neither are progressive champions, to say the least. No. And yet it's probably best that they stay in this administration. And further, the idea of Tillerson as someone in a cabinet is absolutely horrifying in terms of what it means about the kleptocracy, right? You're talking about a lifelong oil executive whose philosophy, much like Trump's, has been self enrichment and greed and doing what's best for him, no matter who he has to receive a medal from. In the case of Vladimir Putin, the fact that someone like that, we say this is one of the more reasonable voices. I don't want to normalize Tillerson yeah. 
but it's true compared to Trump, he is more reasonable. The CEO of Exxon Mobil, who's probably only put in there in the first place to secure that five hundred billion dollar oil deal sure. with Russia, or or whatever uh, uh, other one of his uh, different deals that he had on the table was was attractive to Trump. This is all very scary news, right? The, the news that the president is this interested and this focused on striking North Korea is not good. Uh, it's a strike that would be of questionable benefit to anybody, meaning it's unclear if we did a strike like this, what the benefit is to us or to our allies or to the civilians of North Korea, who I, I guess, are we still claiming, Pat, that we want to do what's best for the civilians of we North Korea? I, I mean, Trump, I guess, is sort of saying that, but... I don't know that anybody really believes that. And we've now learned, and I guess this is in the world of really flaccid silver linings, I guess it's good that there's someone trying to prevent Trump from striking North Korea haphazardly, uh, although it's unclear whether they're going to be effective over the long term. Not good, erratic, irrational. I don't know what other adjectives I would assign to it. The video you just finished watching was made possible by you through the membership program. You can sign up for membership at davidpackmancom slash membership. We are viewer supported independent media. You can use the coupon code. I voted 17 for a 40% discount off of your membership.